part three. We're all the way through to the last part of our um, talk tonight, and we're going to talk about Russian de-management. We'll learn about the differences in how to manage Russian bees. It's important to know what to look for. So we'll examine some of the differences. Let's look at the queen first and determine how she's different. It takes nearly 10 days longer to introduce a new Russian queen bee into the hive. Don't rush it. After seven days, you might inspect and the queen is still in the cage. That's okay. Leave the queen in the cage and do not release her. The colony will release her once she is accepted. If you release her yourself, the colony will more than likely kill her. The first hive inspection is to see The first hive inspection is to see if the queen is laying. This may take up to two additional weeks after the introduction. If there is no pollen or nectar available, it may take longer if your queen, uh, in order to see your queen start laying. It's very difficult to locate the Russian queen once she is released into the hive, even when she is marked or clipped. Oftentimes, an inspection will depend upon finding eggs rather than the queen. Russian bees produce more supersedure cells than other breeds. This is normal and is not a sign of a weak queen. From a management perspective, I have seen hives with six to eight supersedure or swarm cells in various stages of development. The Russians wait until the pupae is ready to hatch and then, like little cannibals, clean out the cell. It's as if the hive has a perpetual queen waiting in the wings. A virgin queen will emerge from its cell on day 16 like other breeds. However, a newly mated and egg-producing Russian queen takes another 20 days to start laying. From egg to egg laying is approximately 36 days, as compared to other queens that are laying at about 28 days. A distinguished characteristic of the Russian queen is her ability to shut down egg production when resources are low and dramatically increase egg production when resources are plentiful. From a management perspective, if you're inspecting a hive during a dearth and you don't see any brood present, it's not because it, it, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the hive is queenless. The Russian beekeeper has to inspect frequently and know his bees. It's important to know when a colony needs to be split or if a colony is actually queenless. Coming out of winter, the cluster size is small. I would compare the cluster size to that of a grapefruit. Compare that to other colonies that are the size of a basketball. If you can see why you can see why the cluster needs more resources to get them through the winter. Spring buildup will start with as few as two frames of brood, yet still yield a sufficient honey crop by the end of the season. The Wisconsin state average for honey production is about 68 pounds. I can start off with the two frames of brood in mid-May and by Labor Day, the bees have produced 70 to 100 pounds. In non-Russian colonies, brood rearing is ramped up in early spring, thus increasing the colony's demand for food. Yet there's nothing in bloom, and so many colonies perish in the spring. Brood buildup 
is tied to natural pollen production. A strong nectar flow without much pollen will not stimulate production, but an ample balance of pollen, nectar, and sugar will quickly speed development. I observe a tendency to swarm not based upon a calendar. Last year, my yard was under heavy freeze in May. I use bloom times to gauge swarming season. I'm on watch for swarming when the dandelions begin to bloom and when between the time of the dandelions beginning to bloom and when the basswood finishes blooming. It's not that a swarm can't happen before or after this time, so I'm always keeping watch at 10-day intervals. Prevent a swarm by staying at least four frames ahead of expansion requirements. Basically, this slide tells us that there is a very limited supply of Russian bees coming from certified Russian bee breeders. There are only seven certified breeders and not all of them sell bees. If you want to purchase Russians and you aren't purchasing them from a certified breeder, you probably don't have the genetic stock that carries the strongest traits that we've discussed. The Russian bee breeders follow stringent guidelines that eliminate inbreeding and their stock is independently verified. Even the U.S. National Library of Medicine has verified high levels of accuracy in the Russian bee breeding program. I have the results of their research as a link on the Sweet Mountain Farm website if you are interested in finding more about how accurate the breeding process is. Let's talk about colony defense. It has been observed that the Russian colony is more defensive during the first brood rearing cycle. This may be apparent in all honeybees, not just Russian colonies, but I have observed that all bees are defensive when the colony is the most vulnerable, meaning early spring is when resources are not yet available and in late fall when the colony is preparing for winter. At Sweet Mountain Farm, we rarely smoke the hives during inspection. The hive is generally quiet when gently manipulated. Each colony will have its own unique temperament for the day, much like me. There are some mornings when I wake up happy and other days I need a cup of coffee and sunshine at my doorstep to feel good about the day. A falling barometric pressure seems to aggravate the colony. I figure that bees must mimic my disposition. If I'm planning to take a walk or garden, I'm certainly not going to be agreeable if the weather suddenly changes and it rains. Russians need to be kept in their own bee yard to prevent aggressive and aggravated colonies. Bees from a mixed yard will rob each other and produce less honey. There's also evidence that varroa mites are easily transferred and picked up during robbing activities. Let's look at late season management. Russian bees survive Wisconsin winters, but understanding Russian bee late season management is essential to survival. I've mentioned that. The winter colony is small, the smaller eight frame hives are ideal for the smaller sized winter colony. Food stores are located above the cluster and in the outer frames of the brood super. In early winter, the cluster is in the brood chamber and as winter progresses, the bees move upward towards the food. If fall inspections indicate low resources, a feeding board is placed on the hive at the winter solstice. I use seasonal methods because of the easy ease of forming good habits. It's like planting the garden on Memorial Day, ha having corn knee high by the 4th, or extracting on or about Labor Day. I know it's time to put my uh, winter feeding boards on 
uh, when winter solstice is here. Sweet Mountain Farm uses an integrated pest management system. We use a screen bottom board and monitor mite loads every 10 days during normal hive inspections. Mites attach themselves to the drone larvae. You can see there um, drone cells. A drone frame, we place a drone frame in the brood box and replace it with an empty drone frame after the drone brood is capped. A drone cell is approximately 6.125 millimeters and larvae will protrude, you can see it on this slide also, the larvae will protrude the cell, whereas the worker cell is 4.9 millimeters and appears somewhat flat. Mite loads have been extremely low using these two methods alongside a Russian bee that's already Varroa resistant. Hive splits can be timed so that Varroa mites self-destruct, a break in the brood cycle by the removal of the queen either temporarily or by a hive split will naturally rid the hive of most mites. We should look at pests and attacks. Tracheal mites. In Russian bees, there is no evidence of tracheal mites. Uh, you must send your bees in to a lab. They must dissect them in order to verify that your bees do not have tracheal mites. But repeated tests have shown that Russians are um, have had no evidence of tracheal mites. The Journal of Economic Entomology um, shows us that between Russian bees and Italian bees, that Russians have a better resistance to small hive beetle, um, at least more of a resistance to the small hive beetle than the Italian breed. During each observation period, the average number of invading beetles was higher in Italian co colonies at 29 beetles per colony than in the Russian honeybee, which had 16 beetles per colony. Now the rush, um, the um, hive beetle is predominant, predominantly in the south, and that is why Wisconsin wants to know whether you're um, bringing any um, colonies into Wisconsin, uh, because they're trying to keep track of the hive beetle. At Sweet Mountain Farm, our biggest problem is ants and earwigs. Our first attack was from an invasion of ants, and it was followed by an invasion of earwigs. The generally accepted management technique is prevention, not restor restoration of an infected colony. Ants reproduce at a horrific rate and will outnumber bees very quickly. We tried eradicating the ants with various methods. We used diatomaceous earth, we used tanglefoot, cinnamon, sanding the hive legs and oil, and then we went on a seek and destroy mission in the evening to dig out ant hills from the bee yard. Digging out the ant hills was the most labor intensive, but it seemed to work the best. The yard looked like a minefield and the lawn tractor had to dodge all the potholes. Here we see how destructive ants can be. Is everyone familiar with diatomaceous earth? Diatomaceous earth is used as a filtering agent in swimming pools. It is ground up sea urchins and acts as sharp shards of glass to the exoskeleton of insects. I placed it around the legs of the hive. This works so long as it doesn't rain. It must be reapplied 
it must be reapplied even after a heavy dew. I do not recommend it, and I'll tell you the reason. I observed my bees taking a nosedive into the white powder, probably thinking it was pollen. The bees then tracked the diatomaceous earth into the hive. Not a good idea. The next thing we tried was Tanglefoot. It's a sticky pine sap substance that can be applied to the legs of the hive. Again, it works until it rains and must be reapplied. The dirt and the sand stick to the Tanglefoot and the ants have better traction to get back into the hive. Cinnamon works, but the ants set up shop in whatever section of a hive that the cinnamon does not cover. The USDA recommends that you sand your hive legs in oil. Oil is messy and it must be refilled. Rain is also a problem when it gets into the oil. Here is a solution that I received from a retired Wisconsin State Bee Inspector. This is what he told me to do. He said, um, a saturated borax solution, uh, mixing it one-to-one -one by volume with a saturated uh, sugar solution. Borax is sodium tetraborate and is available at the grocery store as a laundry aid. It is marketed as 20 mule team borax. A little goes a long way since it's about 4% soluble in water. The mixture is highly toxic to carpenter ants. The mixture was placed into a disposable plastic cup. A hole was placed in the cover that's larger than the ants but too small to let any honeybees in. The cups were placed above the inner cover with an empty shallow super above the inner cover followed by the outer cover. The ants like to move to the top of the hive and lay eggs in the crevices of the inner cover. The mixture will kill the ant colony, but the method is way too slow. All the methods have various disadvantages and do not yield complete eradication. The farm tested in 2013 the use of cedar uh, shavings and cedar sawdust around the hive. And it was hilarious because we saw ants going up and down and around every curled cedar shaving but they did manage to get their way into the hive. In conclusion, we've examined how Russian bees require a much different management style. Knowing the differences is required so that you know what to look for and can it interpret correctly what you're seeing. Failure will occur if you try to raise Russians like you would raise other bees. Russians have a very, Russians are in very limited supply. So consider requeening your hives with Russians. Queens, but beware that requeening from say Italians to Russians also requires a special method. Look on the Sweet Mountain Farm website and there are listed the steps to requeening a hive using Russian stock. Consider raising a mite resistant stock rather than perpetuate wimpy bees and maybe with everyone working toward that end we will be able to reverse the steady decline of honeybee populations. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight and now we'll take questions.